This next page is a brief description of several other types of charts and graphs that you may see in your work. On the left hand side, we have a bar graph, which is useful for comparing different sets of data or different categories of things over time. On the right hand side, we have what's called a pie chart. A pie chart shows us the relationship between different percents of things that total up to 100. Let's take a moment for some quick practice. Here we have three questions related to the graph on the left side of the screen. Please pause the video to read through the questions and answer these questions. When you are ready, please hit continue and we will go over the answers. So for our first question, what are the headings? The headings, again, are at the left and the bottom of the chart. So we have number of committees as our first heading and year as our second heading. So remember that levels are how we measure information. On the left hand side of the screen, the number of committees, we are measuring by twos from zero to 10. And years, we are measuring starting 2013 up to 2020. For the third question, how can we describe the trend of the graph? We can use our adjectives and adverbs to describe the movement of the information or the movement of the line over time. For the first part of the graph from 2013 to 2016, the information is increasing. It is not consistent, but it is an increase. We do start a little bit slowly from 2013 to 2014, but then we have a sharp increase from 2015 to 2016. From 2016 to 2018, we have a decrease, then it levels off a little bit, and finally, there is a big decrease from 2019 to 2020. We have a few more things to consider before we end this presentation. The first is individual data sets versus overall trends. Many times when we're analyzing graphs, we will look at individual or just small chunks of information from the graph. However, we often have to look at the overall trend or how the information progresses or changes over time. This is very similar to what we did with summarizing and paraphrasing. When you describe this information to someone else, you are interpreting and paraphrasing or maybe even shortening and summarizing that information for others. Oftentimes, when we read information from charts and graphs, we give estimates, which is another form of summarizing or paraphrasing. This can be done in terms of percents, ratios, and so on. The last thing to remember when we look at charts and graphs is to ask ourselves what we can conclude or draw or infer from this chart or graph. This often requires us to ask ourselves questions like why something did or did not happen, what we can learn from this information, and so on. Let's take a look at this chart again here, the number of committees chart. As we described earlier, from 2013 to 2016, there was an increase in the number of committees. Then the number of committees started decreasing from 2016 to 2019. But then something happened between 2019 and 2020 to cause the number of committees to de decrease drastically. So we can ask ourselves, what happened around this time that maybe caused the number of committees to shrink from six all the way down to two? There are many different factors for this. There could be many different possibilities. So when we infer things like this, there often are not incorrect answers unless they are completely unrelated to the topic at hand. I hope that you learned a lot from this presentation and I hope that you can take this information and employ it in the next activity that we have as well as the quiz. Thank you.